Today we're going to discuss how to do Disney parks with young kids. So stick around. Hey, welcome back to The Magic and the Music. I'm Jen. I'm Randall. And today we are going to talk to you about bringing young children to Disney parks. Now we typically travel to Disney World and that's where we have mm -hmm. the most experience. So we are mostly talking from our experience at Disney World, but many of these tips will apply to any Disney parks uh, worldwide. Yeah, Because we definitely. have been to a couple of the international ones. So um, we're gonna get right into it. First of all, about us a little bit, we mm -hmm. are parents of two young kids. We have a four-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter, just recently six years old. So um, <laughs> we've been through a lot of these things in recent yeah. years. We've definitely had a lot of experience. Our children, I believe our six-year-old has been six or seven times. Yeah. And our four-year-old has been um, uh, five? Five times, I think. Yeah, I think. So pretty pretty uh, good uh, range of experiences, I think. We yeah, can come yeah definitely. Okay. So for our first big tip for people traveling with kids to Disney Park, we suggest that you get used to having a different kind of a routine or less of a routine when you go to a Disney Park. It is uh, frequent that when you go to Disney that you're going to be staying up late or getting up early and you want to make it so that your kids are used to having some flexibility built in. So one thing that we recommend to do this is to start having your kids adjust their routine when they're at home. If you have a really strict routine when you're at home, then we suggest that you know you try and alter it a little bit here and there and maybe forget when the bedtime is exactly. So that way when you do show up at the parks that you actually have a, a little bit of flexibility built in. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that, uh, with that as well. Routines are important. We all know this, yeah. right? As parents, we know that routines are really important. It gives a kid a sense of stability and expectation and it gets their body kind of going on a certain routine. However, if we're so rigid and strict with the routines, the kids feel that and they know that. Mm -hmm. And when you're at Disney, you don't always have control. Maybe you couldn't get the bus back home and get the food in time and have them eat and then go to bed at on time so you know if that kid is used to hey sometimes my bedtime bedtime is a half hour later or mm -hmm. an hour later or a half hour earlier like if they can have more flexibility and you can like nurture that kind of flexibility I think it makes the trip a lot easier yeah so um, you know obviously I think you know you're gonna do whatever you want with your kids but um, I do know some people who are very very rigid with their routines and I think that that approach might work really, really well at home, but it does not translate super mm -hmm. well to theme parks. Yeah, there's there's a bit of setting your up, yourself up for success here. And in this case, uh, if you have too much of a rigid routine, uh, you might be setting yourself up for having issues while you're at the parks. Yeah. Our next tip is if your child naps at home, let them nap on vacation. But you have to be a little bit flexible about how this happens. Once again, this is about kind of training your child to be a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. in the environment. Um, so we always try to um, encourage our, our children to fall asleep in the stroller. If we were in a place, you know, if we were away from home, um, it's fine. They can fall asleep in the stroller. So then we always had the flexibility of mm -hmm. if we couldn't get back to the room or they were just tired and we couldn't be at the room in time because it could take an hour to get back from the park to our um, hotel room because we would stay on site. Um, you know, uh, having a kid that it can fall asleep in the stroller is really helpful. Yeah. A lot of times I'll bring like, um, like a lightweight kind of, um, blanket or something Shawl you could drape. Like yeah. That. Like you could drape over the stroller so that they could have like kind of some quiet time that really helped. Of course, mm -hmm. we are huge advocates of the afternoon nap or break. And yes. that is a big reason we like to stay on property is that you have the flexibility of leaving. We mm -hmm. often will leave the theme park for like three hours. Three hours. We might take a half an hour to get back to the resort, hang out, chill. Yeah. Sometimes we nap, sometimes we swim, sometimes we just get off of our feet. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's really, huge. That's huge for them. Really. It's great for everyone involved because usually that's at the hottest point of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the busiest in the yeah, park. It's right. crowded. So it might be right after lunch or maybe you even go back to the hotel for lunch mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of skip that 1.30 p.m. Period. A lot of times though, ours is more like two, three. Yeah. But 
still whatever works for you yeah any 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 chance you can get to get out of the park to escape the heat is great yeah for sure another tip we have is that you don't want to worry too much about nighttime routines if you're going to a disney park you will find that you will be walking a ton and so will your kids so one thing to keep in mind is that with a nighttime routine everyone is exhausted so by the time you get back to the hotel and everyone's ready to go to sleep uh, the kids will usually hit the bed and go right to sleep uh, you almost don't need to do any nighttime routine except for maybe like brush teeth and you know put them in pajamas, <laughs> yeah. put them in pajamas and then they're people like people always Ow. say that they'll always say well my kid will be so wired they won't be able to go to sleep no. oh our experience time after time after time has been that you just come back to the room and everybody just crashes yeah it's not a problem yeah. and that's one of the things i love most about vacation is that bedtime is easy because they're so tired yeah. so that is a vacation if you have kids you know that <laughs> our next tip is to bring lots of snacks and small plastic bags keep them with you in your park bag or stroller bag or whatever you have and you want to be ready with a snack anytime because mm -hmm. you never know when your kids gonna start kind of crashing and it's awesome to be able to have a snack ready to go and whatever sort of snack suits you and your family and like what your tastes are and what you know the kid will eat mm -hmm. because you can't always find exactly what your kid will eat um, one of our children is a very picky eater and so we have to bring things um, and another tip that goes with this is we love the refillable popcorn buckets mm. because we can um, just keep popcorn on hand all the time and that's something that our picky eater will eat and yeah. so it's really awesome because every time they say i'm hungry here's some popcorn i'm hungry oh here's some popcorn <laughs> <laughs> and it really helps keep everybody kind of satiated and yeah it's, and it's only a slight cop out but it works <laughs> <laughs> you do what you gotta do. Yeah, and we go through a ton of Rice Krispie treats yeah. and uh, chocolate Teddy Grahams. Teddy Grahams, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Making sure that everyone has their blood sugar levels the way they need to be, um, you know, it, it just makes everyone happier. So that way, if you're you're on your way to a fast pass and you need to make sure you get there, you don't have to stop and get food. You know, you could wait 10, 15 minutes just to get food no on time the way. for that. Yeah, we and got places to be. Yeah, we got to get that fast pass, <laughs> you know. So it's important to have that extra food with you just in case. Another tip that we really love to use is that there are these straps that will attach to your stroller, and this is a great one for everyone because the the strap will it's like attach. A tether. Yeah, it's a, it's a tether. It's a tether. Yeah. It attaches to the cup. Um, so if you have kid, young kids, they're always dropping everything. And if you try and just take a cup with you, that cup is going to be gone inside of two hours. We lost a water um, bottle and that was oh, even with an older kid. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really great to have uh, any of those things on a tether so that way they don't lose it. Uh, we also did that with some snack cups. We did it with well. toys. Yeah, and We even toys. hooked some toys onto yeah. the tether. Um, and you'll, you'll be so glad you did because you'll be pushing that stroller and then suddenly you see that toy <laughs> hanging out of the stroller to the side and it's yeah. like, man, I'm glad that's on a tether because we would have lost that mini and we would have had a meltdown. Yeah. But now it's just dragging on the ground and I can pick it up. <laughs> so yeah. it's no big deal. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's surprising how much that one has probably saved us in the past. Really a lot, yeah. Drink cups and bottles and toys and yeah. everything so i think we have three or four on our stroller yeah and they're just velcro they can just hook on yeah. to anything that the velcro can wrap around and the velcro is strong enough the kid's not going to pull it apart yeah so yeah okay our next tip and this one might be a little bit controversial for some people but we say <laughs> always bring a stroller for kids that are five and under always 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 now um even if you think you don't need a stroller if you haven't been to disney parks it's hard to convey the amount of walking that you're going to yeah. do and how tired you are. And especially if you go in the summer, it's mm -hmm. hot. So you're going to be tired. You don't want to drag all this stuff around. First of all, it, the stroller is as much for you <laughs> as the parent as it is for the kid. Um, yeah. Now, some people are kind of anti-stroller. I get it. Um, I know I've traveled with people who like didn't want to bring the stroller, but we bring our stroller and mm -hmm. guess where their stuff ends up going? On the stroller. On our stroller. Yeah. When you bring a stroller, you not only have a way for your kid to relax, mm -hmm. you have a way to carry all your crap so you don't have <laughs> to carry the backpack, put it underneath. Yeah. You also have a cup holder. 
Two cup holders. Well, we three, have one. Yeah, three, depending four. on what you have <laughs> on your stroller. But we have like a universal stroller um, kind of cup holder mm -hmm. thing. And it's awesome. So then yeah. you can have your drinks and you don't have to be um, shuffling with all this stuff. It is so convenient. I'm actually going to miss the stroller when our kids finally yeah. graduate out of it. And our kids are four and six now. We are definitely going to use a single stroller on our next trip. Mm -hmm. And we and it's it's not that they can't walk. They can walk. And yes, we want them to walk, and there are a lot of times where they do, but when they're just tired or they're, we're in a crowd, that's mm -hmm. another one. Yeah. When you're in like a big crowded space and it's not very safe to navigate, um, that's a great time to just be like, get on the stroller and we're just going to drive you through. Oh, no one's going to step on you. Yeah, particularly during rope drop, uh, you want to have your kids in the stroller if you can because yeah. everybody's moving pretty quickly. It's not that it's dangerous, but you know you don't want them to tr and no one yeah, to trip on them. You don't them. Want, want people to trip on them, and then you don't want them to step on other people, and you're you don't want to get separated from them either, right? And you don't want to you know accidentally run over a kid. Yeah, you know? yeah. So <laughs> it, it just makes so much sense to have the stroller. I'm gonna yeah. miss it when it's yeah. annoying to put on the bus yeah. and fold up, but man, when you're in the theme park, it is great to have. Well, yeah, once you're there, it is it is excellent. And, and particularly if you're staying someplace where it's easy to get a stroller into the park. Uh, the monorail. Monorail or, or uh, Skyliner. Mm. Uh, you got to take that stroller. It's awesome. And, you know, you can uh, rent a stroller as well, which is one way to go. Yeah, but you only have it inside the park. So if you rent it from a different independent company, they can mm -hmm. deliver it to the resort. So that's another option. If But we will tell you, when you fly you can gate check your stroller. It's right. free. You never have to pay for it. And we love it because we have the stroller in the airport. Mm -hmm. We come in. When we get on the plane, we load up the stroller onto the plane. And then when we get off the plane, this stroller is waiting for us. Yep. And so it's there ready to go the whole time. So it's kind of our home base like during the whole trip. Yeah. And even getting onto Magical Express, you don't have to totally deconstruct your stroller. Uh, they'll just have you fold it up the way you would get yeah. on a normal bus. I mean, be careful because there are some limitations to yeah. size of strollers now. That does matter. But at the same time, it makes our trip so much more comfortable. It's great not having to carry a backpack mm -hmm. or a bag. I can just put it all underneath. Um, anything you buy, um, you know, you don't really have to carry or whatever. Yeah. Like if the kids want to bring something, it's like... Fine, whatever. Throw it on the stroller. And another great thing is if you have a good rain cover on your stroller, when you are stuck like in a downpour, which happens in Florida, yeah. um, and it rains hard. So if you're stuck in a downpour, it's great because anything that you have on you or if you're going inside and you're leaving your stroller out in a downpour, you can take anybody else's bags or coats or mm -hmm. any other stuff, put it underneath this big rain cover and then the whole thing is protected from the rain and I that's another big perk of having a stroller for me yeah we really recommend too that you if you're bringing a stroller it needs to come with a big rain cover uh, because there will be times where you might need to have that rain cover to protect ev all the kids in the, the yeah stroller. and the kids will stay dry too yeah, they don't have to get rain gear either <laughs> yeah it, it can uh it can save the day it has a couple times for us actually yeah, for sure. Our next big tip is to use the baby care centers that are in every Disney park in Disney World. They are a godsend sometimes <laughs> because you will be with, with a young kid. You will be, you will have a blowout right with a kid where uh, there is poop everywhere. <laughs> frankly, <laughs> I'm not sure if we've ever had well, one in the park. Did we? I, I think we did once. Well, it's inevitable. It's gonna happen it's, sometime. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um, and, and with that, you can go to a baby care, care center. They have changing tables with paper cloths down that you can replace in between the kids. And um, they have a place for the kids to kind of hang out and watch cartoons. Uh, it's very well air conditioned. They sell all sorts of uh, baby needs. So they have diapers, they have formula, they have... Um, you can buy like a onesie or snacks baby Advil or baby something food, <laughs> you know um just about anything you can think for baby care they have there and you know there may come a time when you're like oh my gosh i need this thing right now mm -hmm. and uh you can go to the baby care center and find it the other th great thing about a baby care center is it's just really relaxing yeah know? like for anybody who goes in with you yeah it's um usually not crowded usually there's a lot of seating around um, you know, you have... They seem like really cool and quiet to me. 
Yeah, and they have like soothing music. They're like music. very calm. They're yeah. like, <sighs> it feels like a complete change of pace. Yeah, I actually the took park. a nap in one once <laughs> with, <laughs> with you our would. son. <laughs> you would. <laughs> Well, he was napping. I was like, I'm going to get a nap in too. So, you know, <laughs> take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there are also bathrooms in there. So yeah. if you're bringing your kid in, that's an opportunity to get to use uh, like a bathroom. Yeah. it's um, Especially if you have like a diaper blowout or something. That's like yeah. a nice, clean, quiet, calm place where you can like handle that. Right. I mean, And they have staff. Right. They have staff and they even have... Um, they have like bottle heaters and they have sinks and stuff. There, oh, and I think there are like you know, breastfeeding for, rooms. Yeah. Don't they? They have yeah. spaces where you can go and nurse. So it's just awesome. I mean, they really want to take care of you. So yeah, I can't. I pick actually a kind of feel weird. <laughs> it's like my like, kids. <laughs> our children are now getting old enough where it's like we probably wouldn't have a need to go in no. the baby center. But I'm like, oh, but like I need to go in there and just just sit, sit down for a little bit. Yeah, because <laughs> it's it's just it's just really soothing. Yeah, it is. All right. So check out baby care centers, they're great. Our next tip for traveling with little kids at Disney World is that when they do have a meltdown, something amazing will happen. If you are anywhere near any cast members- Magical. Who are, yeah, any cast members <laughs> who are kind of hanging out, maybe like around a shop or any of that kind yeah. of, like the guest engagement type of cast members, they tend to have stickers. So if somebody is falling apart and there's a cast member nearby who who has them. They will come out and they'll start to to pull out stickers and be like, "Hey, hey, do you want to have a sticker? It's okay." And um, we've had that a lot of times. It's super um, effective, like at the beginning, like at the beginning <laughs> of your trip. If your kid is yeah. upset, and they'll offer him a sticker, and it's like, "Yeah, it's amazing." After like the day ten, <laughs> they're like, "Do you want a sticker?" And the kid's like. I've Lady, got, I've, I've got like a whole bag full of stickers. I got stickers. bags, stickers. Our kids don't actually say that. But you know, it, they're thinking like unimpressed. Yeah, like, yeah. Unimpressed. But anyway, but it's awesome like the first mm -hmm. couple times. And um, another thing that happened to us, and this is not something you can ask for or expect. No. But there, and this, my kid wasn't, I don't know if she was having a meltdown, but she was like disappointed or upset about something. And a cast member gave her one of those Tinkerbell pixie dust pins. Um, and that was, and I'll put a picture of it here so you can see it. That's a really, really special thing. Cast members are able to just randomly give these out. And, um, you know, don't ask for it. Yeah. Because they're not going to get it. But you never know when you're going to be in a situation where you get, like, extra special kind of magical thing. Sometimes cast members will just give you something. Yeah. I mean, I've been given Mickey Bar. I've uh, been given, um, like, but... little light-up. Yeah, the little light, light up, up things. There's a light up Buzz Lightyear, and there there like was a aerial. light up uh, Ariel. Yeah. And then, um, gosh, we've even had we were in one of the buffets, and our our son wasn't eating so much, and he he really wanted a cookie, but they didn't have a cookie in the buffet. They went to the next door restaurant and got a cookie for him. Yeah. It's like that's they'll the kind go of above service. and beyond if if you can help if. They can, they'll help you. Yeah. And also, um, be nice to them because I know you're stressed out if your kid's upset, but like the cast members want to help you. Yeah. And the more you talk and engage with them and make their day more interesting, the more interested they are in doing something nice and fun for you. Yeah. Yeah. They're really great. Yeah. Another great thing to know at Disney is that if your kid b breaks something or drops something uh, that's edible and you need to replace it, don't hesitate to go back to the vendor and get something like else. something you bought there. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. like walk in and we're gonna <laughs> trash the place. No, but yeah, yeah. I, I brought this food in and then my kid dropped it. Could you please replace no. it? No, no. Like you know, our kids <laughs> bought these really cute lollipops, and of course they, they break, break them. They just drop them on the ground, um, and so they want to help you. Yeah, I think we even <laughs> went through two different lollipops in, in like in like a 20 minute period oh. and we went back to the same store twice and i was like i was like i feel bad but honestly they're there to like make you guys happy and that's, yeah, they, that's wanna, they want they're that's willing to do guest re recovery i mean yeah. don't abuse it of right. course but if your kid buys the ice cream and then they drop the ice cream they want to fix it. Just they go don't back want... and get the ice cream. Yeah, there it's nothing to them to get you the yeah. ice cream again. Don't lie, but you know, they yeah. want to fix it if something went wrong. They want you to enjoy the thing that you bought. Yeah. 
Our next tip for traveling with little kids at Disney is to let the kids watch some point of view mm -hmm. videos or POV videos on YouTube um, of the rides and attractions before you go. Because a lot of people say, well, how do I get my kids ready? Are they gonna be scared of rides? Are they, it's gonna be too loud or too bright or too much action or too scary or whatever. If the kid has seen it before, there's a familiarity, mm -hmm. they're more interested in it. So, um, you know, like before my kids ever rode Splash Mountain, yeah. They had seen the ride through of Splash Mountain. It's it's not like an adult where you have to worry like, oh, is this a spoiler? It's ruining it. Yeah. They don't care. Okay, <laughs> they're like they're like three or four years old. It, it doesn't matter yeah. about that. They actually like. I mean, think about it. Kids love to watch the same video over and over and over mm -hmm. and over again. So if you can introduce that ahead of time, by the time they get there, then it's more fun because it's like, oh yeah, I remember this one. Mm -hmm. And this is the part where this happens. And this is where the scary witch pops out. And it's not <laughs> scary because I've seen it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. This is particularly important for those scary rides, uh, Tower of Terror, or what, well, a lot of people actually consider that pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> but, but I, I mean, mean the, the ones that people think of as scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, you know, anytime something can be a bit more familiar, uh, it, it brings the stress level down a little bit more and makes it yeah. a bit more enjoyable. And more fun. Yeah. So another tip we have is if you're planning to meet some characters at Disney, then we also recommend that you watch some YouTube videos of character interactions with your kids just so they can get accustomed to that. Uh, there are a lot of times where kids will see a character and they will freeze up and they will be uh, scared to go up and say hello or they will be kind of shock and awe kind of situation and um, you want to have them kind of ready to see the characters. Uh, one thing we also particularly tell uh, people to do is if your kid has never done a character meet and greet before is to... Or they're apprehensive about right whoever they're about to meet. Uh, then it's important for you to go and let the group in front of you go see the character and then you kind of sit there and watch them do the interaction. So that way your kids can kind of see, oh, okay, this is what I need to do. Yeah, because some, some of them, especially where there are like multiple rooms mm -hmm. of the character, they might take a group, a few parties together, and you don't, you haven't watched anyone else interact with that character. Yeah. And if, if you're the front of that group and your kid might have some anxiety, you might just say to the family behind you, hey, would, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. My, my kid would like to watch yeah. what it's like to meet Mickey first. And um, and then they can see, oh, well, they go up and they talk to him and then they maybe hug them and then they maybe sign an autograph. And then you can walk the kid through and mm -hmm. say, see, look what they're doing. And um, that really helps to take away, yeah. I think, the anxiety. The one other thing about this is they are big. So big. make sure your children understand, we're going to meet Big Mickey, Big Minnie, <laughs> big, big Goofy, whatever. <laughs> big Chewbacca. Yeah, but Chewbacca's big. He's really big. And like, yeah, they have to understand that because in their mind, Mickey is this plush that they snuggle. Yeah. And they're like, great, I want to go meet him and he's going to be this big. He's going to be tiny. And they have to understand they're big. Yeah. So be ready for it. And again, like we said, always try to create an opportunity for them to watch others have interactions so they can take cues and know yeah. how they're supposed to do an interaction and don't force them. If you get yeah. up there and they clam up and they hide behind your legs, just take, get in the picture and have mm -hmm. the kid, you know, smile and it's fine. Yeah, and honestly, the um, the characters are really great oh, at bringing yeah. it out of the kids. So, you know, you, you don't have to stress too much if your kid clams up because, look, Mickey knows how to work the magic. So, you yeah, know, some of them uh, are absolutely amazing yeah. at getting your kid to respond. So, yeah. um, and then what you'll find a lot, we found a lot, is the kid, our kid might be a little bit shy. And then as they're leaving the character interaction, suddenly, oh yeah, well wait, I want to do this. And it's like, no, your turn's over. Come yeah, on. We got to roll. You're done. So, <laughs> Fast pass. <laughs> so anyway, that always seems to happen. Yeah. They they warm up after a few minutes and they don't want to leave, but it's like, well. So anyway, you want to try to get that process of warming them up a little mm -hmm. bit ahead of time. Our next tip is do not make big promises. Don't yeah. make guarantees to your child. Don't say... Okay, guys, we're going to go ride Slinky Dog Dash today. 
even if you have that fast pass because Slinky Dog Dash might break down yeah, and you might not get to ride it that day and then you might have to fly out and then you never got to ride it or you couldn't get the boarding pass for, um, you know, for Rise of the Resistance. Like you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And so we always try to phrase things to our children. Hey, we're planning to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train today. We've got a fast pass for 1030. So we're really excited that we're going to get, probably get a chance to ride that today. Yeah. And that's really important because we never want to guarantee that anything is going to happen because things change and shows get canceled and there's inclement weather and things get shut down and they break and whatever. And so we just want to prepare the kids for like, this is what we hope to do. But mm -hmm. even if we don't, we're going to have a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really important just because... You just set expectations, right? And uh, if they don't have any big expectations, then there's no big let letdowns. Yeah. And so. it's just all fun. No. Yeah. Yeah. Our next big tip is this to is a big one. <laughs> make your kids go to the bathroom frequently, often, <laughs> all the time. Uh, per particularly before you get on any ride or you go into any show. show. Yeah. Uh, anything that is going to be like 20 minutes or longer. Uh, make sure you hit that bathroom beforehand. The bathrooms are everywhere. They are aplenty. Um, You'll feel like you've been in the same bathroom yeah. like a hundred times. And that's yeah. fine. That means you're doing it right. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you'd much rather have them use the restroom than have an incident. Okay. <laughs> and we know this from personal experience because when I was five years old, I wet my pants on Horizons. I'm actually wearing my yeah. Horizons shirt today. Yay. There's my Horizons pattern. Yeah, she so, even made that. That's right. Crafty. Um, so, so anyway, my dad did not follow that rule and he did not make me go to the bathroom. Yeah. And don't trust them. You know this, you're a parent. Yeah. When they say, I don't have to go potty. And it's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, kid. Okay. You're going to go try. Yeah. Because who wants to pee on a ride? Nobody. <laughs> Our next tip is that sometimes your children are going to value things that are not exactly the top of your list. <laughs> yeah. So we're always focused on getting on the rides and seeing the shows and having the meals and all the experiences and all the things in the theme park. When sometimes all that our kids want to do is be at the pool or wander around the resort or follow a duck. <laughs> Or <laughs> play in the playground. Yes, there is a play. There are playgrounds. Most of the theme parks yeah. have like um, some kind of playground area. In particular, one that our children love is the Laughing Place, which is yeah. underneath the train bridge um, by Splash Mountain in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, kind of between Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain, you go go kind of down underneath, and there's this little playground. And our children love it. Like, yeah. if we let them, they would play there for two hours straight. Yeah, two hours straight. Yeah. And honestly, it's a great spot for parents, too, because you can take a seat. You can watch them. It's pretty much corralled. It's mostly for younger kids, I'd yeah. say. Um, but there are other uh, ones like the Boneyard yeah. in Animal Kingdom. And Epcot has some stuff, too. And they're, oh. pretty soon they're going to have that new play, indoor play area, too. Yeah, there's also the playground in uh, the Dumbo um, oh, yeah. ride that you can take advantage of um, yeah. and we really recommend you know uh, take a minute if, if your kids are kind of starting to act up take a little bit of a break go grab yourself a Mickey bar and then uh, take a seat there and let your kids run amok yeah. for a bit yeah because wandering around chasing a duck or watching a <laughs> bird eat a french fry yeah. might be just as exciting to them as riding Seven Dwarfs My Train. Yeah. No so let them have their fun. <laughs> Our next tip is a really, really important safety yeah. one. Um, Florida has a lot of hazards. And if you are not from that area of the country, you may not be thinking about these hazards. And we take this very seriously because this is like a safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, there are, I mean, I, I kind of jokingly say Florida's trying to kill you because it has like hurricanes and alligators and mosquitoes and snakes, venomous snakes and alligator, I already said alligators, all, two alligators. And um, lots of alligators. Yeah, and it has like brain eating amoebas like in some of the freshwater. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding, I'm not making it up. There's like all this gross stuff um, that's in Florida because it's kind of a wild place. Yeah. And so um, you have to think about those hazards. I know that you're on vacation and you're not wanting to think about those things but we as parents like are mm -hmm. always thinking about that we think oh we're at disney yes disney does a good job of controlling mosquitoes and they do a good job of putting fencing up to prevent people from going in the water but like stay out of the water 
Yeah. Go only in the swimming pools, okay? Yeah. Stay out of the water because there are potentially dangerous things that you can run into, both critters and amoebas yeah. and things you don't want to mess with. And particularly with young, young children, if you don't live in an area where you have things like alligators, you don't wade in the water, you don't go near the water, mm -hmm. you don't let your kid wander to the water. You have to really, really be diligent about that. I'm lucky because I had family that lives in Florida, and so I grew up having kind of an awareness mm -hmm. of those hazards, but it's something that you could fly in from another region of the country and just be completely yeah. unaware. Um, but you just don't mess with that. Um, you don't want to take any chances. And, um, and I just want to reiterate again, do not let your kid go anywhere near the water. And even if you're not right near the water, like if we're mm -hmm. walking back, say when we were like staying at Port Orleans Riverside and we're, it's in the evening and we're walking back to our hotel room, I don't let my toddler run way up out. Like they've got to be like right here in front of me mm -hmm. because, you know, there are lakes and there are canals and, yeah. you know, I'm never going to let that kid out of my sight and um, they're going to be right there with yeah. me all the time and especially after dark for mm -hmm. sure our next tip when you are taking a trip to disney is if you want your kid to ride tower of terror or haunted mansion scary rides, scary <laughs> rides uh, you really want to make sure that you don't tell them that they're scary <laughs> um your kids feed off of you right so if you act like oh this is gonna be a fun ride this is gonna be great this is gonna be cool uh they won't know what hit them and that's kind of what you're going for is mm -hmm. you kind of just want to be like, oh, we're on the ride already and we're done with the ride already. Like when we go, on, fun? We go on Tower of Terror and we're like, hey guys, we're going to go on a jumpy ride. Do you want to yeah. go on the jumpy ride? And usually yeah. they're like, yay, yeah, yay. let's do it. Yay, it's great. And then um, honestly, when they're younger, they, they have less of a concept of what to be scared of. Yeah, because and society so, hasn't told them what's scary yet. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't hurt to take them on. Um, you know, uh, just kind of play it by ear, I guess. Uh, the other part I highly recommend is to also get a fast pass for those scary rides. Mm -hmm. uh, because the less time that your kid has to think that this is scary. Like the cue um, and the atmosphere. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just going to go a lot better for you. And uh, you will find that if they don't have much time to get scared, then they won't get scared. Also, another tip about this is that typically... Like we have very tall children, so they mm -hmm. could ride those things, anything with a height restriction, Early. they could ride it very young. So we found that like putting a three-year-old on Tower of Terror was yeah. way easier than putting a five-year-old on yeah. Tower of Terror. Yeah. She because, aged a few years and then she and was- And she became more apprehensive. More apprehensive. But, yeah. it, but then we said, you've done this before. And- like, You've been doing this since you were three. Yeah. And, that, and she'll do it. She'll do it. It's just, you kind of need to go back to that first and say, well, you've been on it before, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's a, something that as they get older, um, that can change. Another thing to be wary of is once we were with a traveling party um, and somebody in our, we were going on Haunted Mansion, we didn't say anything. We're just, okay, go on Haunted Mansion. Here we go. And, um, and then somebody in our party said, ooh, are you scared? And I was like, why are you doing Shh. Quiet. <laughs> It's not they scary. They weren't scared till you told them to be scared. Yeah. <laughs> so they weren't scared till you said it was scary. So yeah. make sure you tell like the other people in your party, if you're trying to get a young kid onto those and you think they might be apprehensive, tell the other people in your party, like, be cool about this. Yeah. We're just going to go just, right on just it. Play it, deal. play it easy. Yeah, you know. Be cool. Yeah. Our next tip for traveling with young kids to Disney is rider swap or baby swap. This thing is magical. Really. <laughs> um, as a parent who really wants to ride the rides, you want to be able to take advantage of all the rides that your kids get to go on. And if you have a kid that is either uh, too young to, to go on a ride or they too don't meet short the height requirement. or yeah. uh, too scared to go on a ride, uh, you can always do a baby swap. And this is important. I think it's officially rider swap. Right. Rider or Because they don't have to be a baby and they right. don't have to be... My understanding is they don't have to be below... The height requirement they just have to be yeah. someone who's not willing to ride and, and can't be like alone mm -hmm. and so, so that i mean that could be that could be adult an older adult That's or really. that could be somebody anybody yeah <laughs> yeah well anybody that needs supervision yeah that is, needs help <laughs> yeah. that's kind of how it works out yeah um and and how it works just real quickly 
is you go up to the gate and you say to the people... The entrance to the ride. Right, yeah. entrance to the ride. And you say, uh, I need a rider swap. And they will give one person a ticket or they'll actually sometimes scan your magic band. It used to be a physical ticket. Re- more recently, they've yeah. been doing a thing where they scan your band and they put it on there. We don't know what that's going to look like now because yeah. we are currently in the closure period for COVID-19 and things are going to change, but I would expect that it would be a magic band scanning kind of situation. Yeah, so, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and what they will do is they will set it up so your first group will go and wait in line and ride the ride. Or if they have a fast pass, they will go through the fast pass portion of the, the line. And then when those people come out, and you can still leave an adult with your kids or uh, whoever, and then the other people in your party that didn't get to go on the ride can now go on the ride. And I think it's three people that can go back. Three people. In. And that's, so if you have like a, an older kid who can yeah. go, they get to go twice, which is yeah. pretty cool. It's pretty much a bonus for the, the older kid yeah. because they get to ride it a bunch. And you can find other videos on YouTube and stuff. You can um, find other resources yeah. that go into more detail about how it works. But use Rider Swap. It is yeah. a great, great tool for you. Yeah, and it's it really makes taking kids to Disney a lot easier mm-hmm. uh, because otherwise, you know, half of your party doesn't get to experience the ride. And that's no fun, you know? I mean, I, I wanna ride all the rides. <laughs> okay, our next tip is for you, for the adults, for the parents. For you. Self-care. Yes. Take care of yourself. Wear comfortable shoes, have whatever tools you need to stay cool, wear comfortable clothing, um, make sure you got your sunscreen, maybe yeah. your cooling towel or your sunglasses or whatever you need to make you be comfortable. Stay hydrated, mm-hmm. stay caffeinated if you need that. <laughs> um, whatever it is, you have to make sure that you're okay so that mm-hmm. you can keep your kids okay. If you're falling apart, your children have a much greater likelihood of falling apart. And as, as you always say, it's like the airplane thing. Yeah, it's, it's like on the airplane, they say, Put the mask on yourself first. The oxygen mask. Then yeah. on your child. Oh, not, I'm not the th- child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just modeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you always put it on yourself and then the kid. So yeah. exercise self-care. Make sure that you're okay. And then you can meet the needs of your kid a lot yeah. more readily. I think this tip is one of the biggest tips, really, for taking young kids to Disney. And that is you need to plan ahead. Uh Going to Disney with a plan, and it doesn't have to be a strict plan. It doesn't have to be like regimented down to the second of what's going to happen in a day. But you need to at least understand how to get on the rides that you really want to get on. Uh, Like Rise of the Resistance. If you want to get on Rise of the Resistance and you need a boarding pass, you need to know how to get it. And um, you need to be prepared to kind of make those sacrifices (laughs) sacrifices <laughs> that's your responsibility rides. as the parent like that's yeah. that thing we talked about setting up realistic expectations don't say to your kid okay yeah. guys we're gonna go and we're gonna ride rise of the resistance and we're gonna arrive at the theme park at 4 p.m yeah that's not gonna no. happen you need to do <laughs> your homework yeah and give your kid realistic expectations and know what it's gonna take to help mm-hmm. create that experience that you're trying to yeah you wouldn't them. you wouldn't know how many people we saw uh when we went on rise of the resistance who would walk up to the gate for Rise of the Resistance, thinking they could just get on, and then they have this shocked look on their face when they find out, oh, I need to be here at the break of dawn in order to even like get a chance right. to ride this. Or, or for example, yeah. like a, a Slinky Dog is a very kid-friendly ride. It has a lower height requirement. Mm-hmm. And you'll see families that see Slinky Dog, and then the kid goes, oh, I want to ride that. And then they walk up and they discover that the, the queue is 180 minutes. Yeah. It's like, Three well, hours. okay, if you wanted, if your kid was maybe going to want to ride that, you needed to be here in the morning or right. maybe very last thing in the day, or maybe you had that fast pass or you were ready. Yeah. And in general, we say, you know, if you can be more prepared, it's better for you. Um, you can get those fast passes that will make your day a lot easier. Yeah. And then you can just pick up other rides in between your fast passes. Yep. And that the less waiting in line that you can do, the better. Our next tip is to reduce the amount of time that you wait in line. This kind of dovetails from the last one that we did. Um, Happy kids don't have to wait in line for super, super long periods of time. Yes, Yes. things are gonna happen and you might have to wait for a bus or you might have to wait for your plane or something happens, a ride breaks down, you're in line for a long time. Mm -hmm. You you can't avoid that. 
but um, as much as possible, reduce the amount of time that you're spending in line because that's when kids start to fall apart and they get fatigued, they mm-hmm. get tired, um, and you know it's just no fun. So um, make sure that you either have your fast passes set up or you have a strategy. Mm-hmm. Check out touringplans.com. They have a lot of really amazing data on cues and um, things like that, what to expect, because you need to have a realistic expectation. Like you can't just think, I'm going to walk in to Magic Kingdom and get yeah. on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and I'm just going to walk right on. It's like, you know, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So you need to have realistic expectation and a plan. Yeah. Uh, with that, I'd say make sure you have the app because knowing what rides have lower wait times are really important for you to uh, figure out, okay, I'm going to go over to this one because it has a 10 minute wait time, mm-hmm. you know, and you can quickly adjust your plans on the fly just by using the app. You know, it's, it, it really is powerful to, to give you the ability to, instead of having to like look through the map and be like, oh, okay, where do I want to go? You can just like look at the map on the app and we'll say the little wait times of all the rides right there. And you can say, oh, okay, let's go to that one. And that makes things a lot easier. It sure does. All right, we are to our final tip, and this yeah. has got to be the biggest, biggest tip for taking little kids to Disney World or to Disney Parks, and it doesn't have a whole lot to do with the kids. <laughs> well, it's more about you. This is about you. <laughs> Self-care. Self-care. Um, get a babysitter. Yes. Go take a date night or an adult night or whatever the case may be with your traveling party. We get a babysitter yep. who comes to our room and takes care of our children for the evening and puts them to bed in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And we go out and either have a really nice dinner where we don't want to have the kids there, or we go out and ride roller coasters so we can't ride them anymore. Yep. Or we go out and go dancing, or we go and do the void at Disney Springs (laughs) or whatever, (laughs) go out to a club, go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, just something without the kids. And it's really important, not just for you, but also for the kids because it gives the kids kind of an evening where they can kind of decompress a bit. Um, the babysitting services that are there are really great. Um, there's one sanctioned by Disney. There are a few there's different a recommended by Disney. Recommended we can put Disney. some links in the comments below about uh, services we've yeah. used. We have never had a bad experience. No. We've probably had them maybe uh, eight different times, yeah. eight or nine different times. Yeah. Never had a bad experience. Yeah. The kids have always been happy, healthy, and safe. Yeah. And it's, it's really something to, to get out of uh, the day-to-day, you know. And um, for you as an adult, it's something to really, like, look forward to. Yes, it's like you know? our vacation on Yeah, vacation. we're like, oh, that's, I can't wait for our date night <laughs> to yeah. go. And, yeah, uh, it is great. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it, it's great for all parties involved. It sure is. <laughs> Another reason that it's great for the kids is that it gives them kind of like a low key night. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like a night off for them. You're not out watching fireworks or doing a show yeah. or doing whatever. They are. They get to just kind of like go to bed at their normal time, yeah. maybe chill out, watch a movie, or maybe use some of the um, amenities that are at the hotel. And so they get to enjoy the hotel. It's really nice and it's just such a, a good, it's like the highlight of our trip yeah. usually. So yeah. we love it. All right, well that's it for us today on the magic in the music. We hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit that subscribe button below, hit the like button and subscribe. I don't know, it's down here. Yeah. Down here somewhere, maybe? Yeah. Maybe. Um, hit that subscribe button because it helps out our channel so, so much, and it's mm-hmm. free. And then you get to know when we have new stuff coming out if you hit the little bell icon. So yeah. um, write your uh, questions or comments down below, and we would love to answer those for you. So yeah. thank you for joining us today. And remember, there's, there's magic, magic in, in the music. music. Bye. Bye.